Hello again, it's been a while since I dropped a, a video um, so I've been on holiday up in the north of Scotland and more on that later. I've got a request a month or so ago from one of the subscribers in the comments section and asked if I would do a video on image arithmetic, so addition, subtraction, multiplication. I already covered and, or, and not in the uh, binary masks video, but I thought I would just uh, do a quick um, rundown of what addition, subtraction, uh, division and multiplication might do for your images and when you might use them. So let's crack on with it. Okay, well here we are, beautiful Balahulish in the, in the background of the image uh, on, the, on my desktop here. Okay, here's a couple of images. They are 8-bit images, as you can see. Um, what would happen if we just added these two images together? Well, remember that um, an image is a 2D array of numbers, and if you were to, and the result image of an addition would be an image where at every location in the image the intensity was the sum of the intensities at the same location in both the original images. So the intensity is added together or subtracted or divided or multiplied. Fairly simple stuff. So we go to the process menu, we go to the image calculator uh, we find our two images, uh, actin Z1 raw 2 pick, that's right, add initial last. And we want to add these two images together and create a new window, keep the originals. So what do we get? Uh, we get this image here, uh, looks like it's uh, got the wrong lookup table. So as you see, you get a much brighter image, you've got the sum of the two images, you can see this nucleus here appears here, but it's pretty saturated as you can see, you know, if you look at the image intensity values up here, 255. Yeah, and one way, remember, to check, a good way to check if you've got saturation is to use the high-low lookup table. Here it is here. And what that will do is it will colour those pixels, which are 255 saturated pixels, colours them red, and those pixels which are zero or black, it colours them blue, so we see that we've got no pixels that I can see that are blue. We've got a proportion here which are saturated. If we were to look at the image histogram, it would tell us, yeah, our minimum value is 4, our maximum value is 255, so we've definitely got some saturation. So it's quite a bright image. Um, that would be the same as, in fact, let me just put it back to grey gray lookup table. Um, yeah, it would be the same as merging the two images if we were to merge the two channels. Uh, let's. Oh, well, I don't need to do it. Okay, so addition is the same as uh, as merging. Uh, so what we got next uh, on, the, um, on the image calculator? We have subtraction. Okay, so well, let's subtract. Yeah, let's subtract the nuclei from from the original from the, the last image. What do we get? Well, maybe a bit clearer if we make it a grayscale. Let's see what do we get if we make it a grayscale. Okay, so you can see that what we've done is we have subtracted the last image from this image, and here's our result. Okay, so. It's quite nice. It shows you the difference between the two images. Maybe that's not quite as clear. I've got a couple of image sets here that for the subtraction that might show you where this might be more useful for subtraction. Okay, so here's two images that look almost identical, right? Pebbly Beach and one of the stones is missing. I've used the clone operator um, in Photoshop to remove one of the stones painting in the background. Uh, now it's actually this little stone here. 
So you can see that it's this little stone here would be around about this area here. So yeah, a lovely Photoshop job, I think hopefully you would agree. But if we didn't know where in the image um, there was a difference, then we could use the image calculator to subtract one image from another. So let's do uh, Pebble 1B and subtract so pebble one image and subtract one B from it. And there you see, there is, that's the bit that was painted in. That's the difference between the two images is that little bit here, which is where that little stone there was. So subtraction can be quite useful to see the difference between two images. We could do it the other way around um, if we were to subtract. So there we were subtract well, one B from one. We would subtract one from one B. We get kind of similar result. You'll see. There we go. Okay, just the opposite. Simplest way probably to do that though is to use the difference operator, which you will find down here. So what's the difference between the two images? Let's go back and do. The difference between image 1 and image 1b is the same result as we got when we did the subtraction. A nice result. So addition and subtraction I think are pretty straightforward. Um, multiplication and division I th think, I mean it's obvious what it does is it takes one image and then for every pixel value at a particular location it multiplies that value by the value at the same location in the other image. Of course what you're going to end up with is where, where the image is bright then you'll end up with loads of saturation. Let's just try it. Um, because once the, uh, once the value exceeds the, the limit of the image bit depth, so if it's an 8-bit image where 255 would be the maximum value, if you multiply two images together, wherever you get a value larger than 255, then the image is just 255. So the, the pixel value which is assigned is 255. So let's multiply our... Uh, we want this the... STD2 image, so that one multiplied by um, Adelastin, presumably we're going to get really screaming bright image, it's totally saturated as you can see, so that's got the high, it's assigned a high low. Um, if we look at the grayscale for this, yeah you see it's a completely saturated image. And when we apply the high low filter. Yep, okay, you see all the red there. No, no, actually, you see here, there's a little bit of blue. And that shows us that somewhere in the image, somewhere in this pair of images, there must be an area which is zero. Because obviously, if you multiply something by zero, you get zero, and therefore that gives you a black pixel. So one of these two images must have zero values. So let's see, is it this one? Well, let's look at the high-low. Now, I've applied the high-low there and there's no saturation in this image and there's no negative or zero values. Can we confirm that with the histogram? Yeah, there's, there's a value of zero. There is a 255, so there must be a red pixel in there somewhere. I can't see it, so there can't be very many. Is it this one maybe that's got the zero values? Yeah, there you see. So the these little blue values there. So those blue pixels there are zero. And in fact, if I just select that image um, and, and watch the values up here, if I roll over, you see these are, are zero values. So, the multiplication can be useful um, for, for, for using masks. If you wanted to mask out a part of an image, then you could use a multiplica multiplication. 
So uh, let's try that then. So let's do, let's see, we'll take this image and we will threshold it. Uh, we set the threshold, maybe something like that. Uh, let's just, well actually, you know what I want to do? I want to duplicate that image in case I want it again. Yeah, let's stick it over here. Um, okay, so we'll apply this threshold. All right, so I've got a nice mask there. Um, now, look at the values up here. You'll see that all the white are zero and all of the black are 255. So if I multiply this image, if I multiply this image by this image, then a multiplication by zero will effectively remove all of these pixels. And what you'd be left with would be presumably only the values here, which will be 255 multiplied by whatever's here, um, which of course will be saturated. So let's just do that multiplication and see what happens. Maybe it's easier to see it rather than have me explain it. Um, so, oh, do you know, let me just rename this to make this a bit simpler. I'm going to rename this image uh, Nuclei mask because that's kind of kind of what it is, right? So nuclei mask, adventitial elastin. Right, let's uh, let's do the image calculator here. Um, so we'll multiply the adventitial elastin by the nuclear mask. Uh, let's take out the so yeah, you can see from the high low that all of this is now zero. But let's uh, put it back to grayscale. Now, it just looks like the inverse of the mask, but of course the reason for that is that these, these are just saturated values, so you, you don't see any, um, any detail in this image. If we wanted to see the detail in this image um, that lies under the mask, then we would do an AND operator. I uh, did that in a previous uh, video, but let's um, let's just try it here, just almost as a recap. So, if we were to do the nuclear mask and the adventitial elastin, you see that what we get, the image that we get, is the detail from this image that lies underneath the mask. Okay. Now that's a pretty hideous image, but hopefully um, you may have some application where that might be quite useful. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that one. And remember to hit that like button and subscribe and for, for notifications. And behind me here, we're in Glencoe in Scotland. See you next time.